One of the most important aspects of success in high-tech markets is the usage of market-based information. The term market orientation refers to a philosophy of decision-making focused on customer needs. And in this sense, a market orientation is part of the organizational culture of the company that is reflected in its values and beliefs about how it gathers, disseminates, and uses market-based information. This first section of Chapter 4 essentially goes through some of the difficulties that high-tech firms face in becoming market-oriented and how they can do so more effectively. Empirical studies show definitively that companies that are more market-oriented actually have greater creativity and improved product performance. So the ability to be market-oriented is considered to be a critical capability or core competency for success in high-tech markets. Companies that are market-oriented have four characteristics, and I'm going to go through each of these four characteristics in turn. As I mentioned previously, that companies that embody this market orientation in the way they gather and utilize information have superior product and service quality, more innovative products, and enhanced business performance. If you want the empirical research that supports these effects, they are footnoted meticulously in Chapter 4. In fact, in high-tech markets, the effect of market orientation on performance is actually stronger than in non-high-tech markets. And the theorizing is that firms that have a strong R&D base actually gain the most from a strong market-oriented capability. Let's start with the first characteristic of a market-oriented firm also called customer-oriented, because the word market and customer in high-tech essentially means the same thing. The first characteristic is that market-oriented firms generate information about market trends and stakeholders or customers in the market. This includes generating market intelligence about current customer needs as well as future customer needs. This embodies that notion of bifocal vision discussed previously. In addition, market intelligence includes competitive intelligence about competitors' capabilities and strategies. This is very difficult because we need to know both direct competitors as well as indirect competitors. And with competitive volatility, we know that competitors of the future may in fact be in different markets and due to technology convergence, they may be competitors in the future. For example, Amazon is going to be a competitor of cloud-based computing services. They're not just an e-tailer. Furthermore, market intelligence includes information about emerging technologies and trends in very different industries. Clearly, generating market intelligence is difficult, and it requires an investment in market research. In fact, companies who say they're market-oriented do need to back this up with specific investments in uh, gathering information. There is benchmarking available to know how much money should be spent in generating information, and this is available from the Conference Board, who essentially provides information about what percent of revenue is spent by various industry sectors and various sizes of companies. This does appear on page 190 in the book, and I'll just give an example. The pharmaceutical industry spends approximately 0.78% of its revenue on market research, 
and a typical pharmaceutical company employs 52 people in market research. Now that's just an example. Other categories are technologies in the B2B sector, 0.25% on market research with 15 people staffed in that department. And companies that are less than $1 million actually have approximately five people who are employed in the market research function, spending only 0.07% of their revenue. It's really less about how much money is spent than money is allocated and budgeted for this function, and people are uh, delegated the responsibility to gather this information. There are two types of ways to gather information. One is in responsive orientation, which is really about current customer needs and current competition versus proactive, which is future looking about future customer needs and future competitive threats. It's very important that companies not be myopic and not focus only on their served or current customers. If a company is always reacting to existing threats, the firm is always playing catch-up. Therefore, in high-tech companies, a proactive market orientation is most strongly associated with success. Although this can be a risky approach to gathering data, it also has a greater payoff. The second dimension of market orientation is how the company shares or disseminates information. This can be harder than it sounds because people in organizations are very turf oriented and information is a key source of power. Hence, people don't like to share all their information because they feel that it dilutes their clout in the organization. Some of the strategies that are used to encourage sharing are to have cross-functional teams so that the company has fewer silos. And this team or orientation can be critical in helping diffuse information broadly across the organization. Knowledge management systems such as internal wikis can help with this and internal um, social networks. The third characteristic is how the intelligence is interpreted and acted upon. Now simply sharing information is insufficient to actually utilize it effectively. People have to debate the data, they have to discuss it, they have to have a dialogue. And when we have an internal debate about the validity of various data and what it means, we're less likely to be myopic. Again, knowledge management software can help with this orientation, but again, it also requires investment. Finally, executing on the data is critical. Companies oftentimes have information, but they simply don't use it. And cross-functional integration across organizational boundaries can help overcome the barriers that essentially disregard customer data or marketing input. Just like we see coopetition between strategic alliance partners in which companies simultaneously cooperate and compete. We also see coopetition internally in a company where departments oftentimes not only need to cooperate, but they sometimes feel that they compete for resources. One of the most useful things that a company can do is actually rate itself on the degree to which it is market-oriented. For example, with the big data movement, 
that is so prevalent in business today, companies can rate themselves on the extent to which they use big data. One study by McKinsey showed that only one-third of companies say that they effectively use data that's available to them. So, some of the items that can be used to assess the degree of market orientation include things such as we in the organization continuously work to understand our customers' needs. We measure customer satisfaction systematically. We want customers to think of us as their ally. Other items appear on page 114 in your book in terms of how a company can rate itself on its degree of market orientation. It is very difficult for market or excuse me for high tech companies to become market oriented. And part of the reason for this is that high tech companies start with the technology or product focus. Engineers find it difficult to speak the language of customers because they have different trainings and background. And in fact, the resource commitment to gathering data, sometimes a company feels that it precludes it from being market oriented. And despite these barriers, research shows that there are facilitating conditions that can help a company become market oriented, including top management support simply by asking questions such as what market data we, do we have to support this decision? Have we tested this new product concept with our customers? What competitors do we have if we move into this space? Decentralized organization structures or organizational structures that are not organized by product but by industry can be helpful and reward systems that actually focus on customer orientation can help a company become market oriented. The fact is it, it is very difficult to gather information in high-tech industries because it's not easily available. And as a result, companies have to prioritize the ways in which they gather information and use it so that they don't have this paralysis by analysis. At this point, I'll go ahead and conclude that the heart of a market orientation essentially requires that a company initiate the change process to become market oriented, that it reconstitute its processes and structures to do so, that it institutionalize those changes through performance-based management, and that it work to maintain it over time. The second half of the Chapter 4 podcast will focus specifically on how R&D personnel interact with marketing personnel.